Dear students, welcome to the EPG Part Shala. I am Dr. Gurmeet Singh, Professor of Chemistry in the University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module which shall deal with atomic force microscopy, which is abbreviated as AFM. And uh, we have given already in one of the last uh, presentations about the introduction of this. In today's module, we are going to talk about instrumentation and this shall be under the paper of surface analytical techniques part one. After completing this module, you will definitely be in a position to understand about the basics of this. That is, how do we operate this? What is the basic principle involved in this? Uh, you will be able to understand general components and their functions. What is the probe that is used? the importance of probe in AFM studies, then comparison between AFM and other electronic microscopes. Well, when we deal with this, we talk about sample preparation as the first part. Then in the next one, we have imaging modes. In the third, we shall go over to improved measurement quality. And finally, we'll come down to the limitations of AFM. And we, in other words, say, the disadvantages of AFM. Now, when we talk about operations, obviously, scanning probe microscopes operate by detecting the deflection in the cantilever. Modern scanning probe microscopes use a split photodiode to detect this deflection. This deals with atomic force microscopy, abbreviated as AFM. Atomic force microscopy is a type of scanning probe microscopy where the probe can be used to physically contact the substrate to obtain topographical information as well as material properties. There are three modes which are used in AFM. First is contact mode, second is non-contact mode. Third is tapping mode. Laser beam deflection offers a convenient and sensitive method of measuring cantilever deflection. AFM cantilevers have high flexibility. Tube piezoceramics position the tip or sample with high resolution. Feedback is used to regulate the force on the sample. Basic principles. The AFM consists of a cantilever with a sharp tip. We also call it probe at its end. And that is the one which is used to scan the specimen surface. When the tip is brought into proximately or proximity of a sample, Forces between the tip and the sample lead to a deflection of the cantilever according to Hooke's law. Typically, the deflection is measured by using a laser spot reflected from the top surface of the cantilever into an array of photodiodes. Feedback mechanism is employed to adjust the tip to sample distance to maintain a constant force between the tip and the sample. Traditionally, the tip or sample is mounted on a tripod of three piezo crystals with each responsible for scanning in the x, y, and z directions. Chose the flow diagram for atomic force microscopy. It talks about general components and their functions and all these components and uh, their function have been indicated in this slide and are labeled very, very appropriately in all quarters. In this, we shall discuss about the probe. What is a probe and how do we use this shall find mention in this particular slide. An AFM probe is a consumable measuring device with a sharp tip 
on the free swinging end and a cantilever that is protruding from a holder plate. The dimensions of the cantilever are in the scale of micrometers. The radius of the tip is in the scale of a few nanometers. The holder plate, also called the holder chip, is often 1.6 millimeter by 3.4 millimeter in size, which allows the operator to hold the FM probe with tweezers and fit it into the corresponding holder, clipsing the scanning head of the atomic force microscopy. Gold coatings for covalent bonding of the biological molecules and the detection of their interactions with the surface, diamond for increased wear resistance, magnetic coating for directions or for directing the magnetic property of the investigated surface. This is the role that a probe plays while using atomic force microscopy. AFM imaging, raster scanning, and height profiling. Obtaining surface profiles have been indicated in a particular figure. Here, the way it carries out the probe or the measurements in x direction, y direction, and z direction have been indicated in this. So, this way, the surface profiles are obtained in three directions, namely x, y, and z. And then in the lower part of the slide, raster scan has been indicated uh, in this particular mention of AFM. What is the importance of the probe in AFM? Uh, one would feel that this is the most important uh, part uh, while dealing with AFM. The heart of the AFM is really in the cantilever and tip assembly. These are the most important uh, components of this equipment. They are often referred to as the probe. This probe governs the interaction and ultimately the type and quality of data measured with the help of instruments. The probe really has uh, two parts. I mean, one takes it as a combined one, but it is made up of one, the cantilever, and the second is the tip. The AFM is typically made up of silicon or silicon nitride material. It does not have to be made of the same material as the cantilever, but each material has its own advantages. A silicon probe can typically be made sharper, whereas a silicon nitride probe should wear less than a silicon probe. That's more durable in the sense. There are many manufacturers of AFM probes uh, in these days, such as App Nano is one company. Then a slum research is another one, budget sensors, Bruker, NanoWord, nano sensors, then Micro Mesh, and Olympus. These companies, in addition to making AFM, have been into making other equipments also, but they are known for AFM manufacturing. Tips generally are made up of diamonds, which have several advantages such as wear resistance is one of the most important ones, and stable shape during imaging. This, as well as improved and more reliable electrical measurements with a conductive diamond material is the main requirement. AFM tape also have flexible, or they have flexibility to be functionalized or coated. So one can coat a tip with a metal like cobalt or platinum. This is actually needed for electrical or magnetic measurements or even uh, gold measurements for that matter. The AFM tips can be functionalized directly for chemical and biological applications. 
a gold coating also provides a convenient platform for chemical or biological functionalization by taking advantage of thiol gold chemistry the customization possibilities for tips are endless we indicate a comparison between afm and electron microscopes there are some major differences between the normal electronic microscope and atomic force microscope these are indicated here and broadly speaking these can be summed up into four headings the first being optical and electron microscopes can easily generate two dimensional images of a sample surface it can be done with a magnification as large as 1000 times or as we write 1000x for an optical microscope and a few hundred thousand here it is written 1 lakh or 100000x for an electron microscope however these microscopes cannot measure the vertical dimension the in z direction of the sample that is the height cannot be measured for example for any particle or depth for example the holes or pits at the surface we cannot find out with the help of electron microscope or optical microscope as we put it afm which uses a sharp tip to probe the surface features by raster scanning can image the surface topography with extremely high magnification up to about 100000 times or as we write 1 lakh x comparable to even better than electronic microscope the measurement of an afm is made in three dimensions the horizontal xy plane and the vertical z plane the resolution that is magnification at z direction is normally higher than what one gets for xy plane sample preparation which forms a very important part of study of any surface with the help of afm the afm can be used to examine any material with a surface roughness that does not exceed the height range of the scanning tip the choice and preparation of the surface can influence the surface tip interaction examples of influencing factors are excess moisture dust grease or other contaminations of the sample surface which are normally there on the surface because of this some samples need special preparation to clean their surface generally however only clean your sample first if this is absolutely required and be sure to clean very carefully in order not to harm the sample surface if the surface is damaged obviously one cannot get a reliable result which is needed in a study of this kind if the surface is dusty then we try to measure on a clean area between the dust and the other uh, surface part although it is possible to blow away the coarse particles with dry oil free air small particles generally stick quite strongly to the surface and cannot be easily removed this way so what what is done is or uh, this note is taken pressurized air is generally dry and this pressurized air from an in house supply is generally Uh, not the one which is the only one which is used so we we can blow the pressurizer to clean the surface and then test whether it has been done or not in this case an oil filter can also be installed if the surface has got to be cleaned blowing away dust by breath is not advisable because it too is not dry and the risk of contaminating the sample even further is very high 
So when the sample surface is contaminated with solid matter or substances that can be dissolved, the surface should be clean with the solvent. Soluble suitable solvents are distilled and demineralized water or alcohol or acetone as the need may be. Depending upon the nature of the contaminant, we can use either of these. The solvent should always be highly pure in order to prevent accumulation of impurities contained within the solvent on the sample surface. This forms a very important point of the study that this has got to be very, very pure and the surface should be clean. When the sample is very dirty, it should be cleaned several times to completely remove partially dissolved and redeposited contaminants on the surface. Delicate samples which would suffer from such a treatment can alternatively be cleaned in an ultrasonic path imaging modes. Now, as we said in the beginning, there are three imaging modes, which is classified as contact mode, non-contact mode, and tapping mode. In contact mode AFM, repulsive VWD is used. When the spring constant of cantilever is less, is less than the surface, the cantilever bends. The force on the tip is repulsive. By maintaining a constant cantilever deflection using the feedback loops, the force between the probe and the sample remains constant and an image of the surface is obtained. Next we come down to intermittent mode which is also known as tapping mode. The image here is smaller to contact. However, in this mode, the cantilever is oscillated at its resonant frequency. The probe lightly taps on the sample surface during scanning, contacting the surface at the bottom of its swing. By maintaining a constant oscillation amplitude, a constant tip sample interaction is maintained and an image of the surface is obtained. This has been very beautifully illustrated in the figure shown in this slide. Then the last mode which is used is called non-contact mode or attractive VWD. The probe does not contact the sample surface for that matter, but oscillates above the absorbed fluid layer on the surface during scanning and gives the detailed analysis of the surface. What way contact mode and dynamic mode are used while analyzing the surfaces? In contact mode, the deflection of the cantilever is kept constant. In dynamic mode, the tip is oscillated at the resonance frequency and the amplitude of the oscillation is kept constant. This tells about modes of operation. Contact mode is the first one. In the so-called contact AFM mode, the tip makes soft physical contact with the surface of the sample. The deflection of the cantilever, dx, is proportional to the force acting on the tip. This happens via Hooke's law, which can be given as f is equal to minus k, where xi where K is the spring constant of the cantilever. In contact mode, the tip either scans the constant small height above the surface or under the condition of a constant force, either of the two is done by this. In the constant height mode, the height of the tip is fixed, whereas in the constant force mode, the deflection of the cantilever is fixed. And the motion of the scanner in z direction is recorded in the z direction. By using contact mode, AFM, even atomic resolution images are obtained, which are very small in terms of the size. For 
contact mode AFM imaging, it is necessary to have a cantilever which is soft enough to be deflected by very small force and has high enough resonant frequency to not too susceptible to vibrational instabilities. Silicon, nitrides, these tips are used for contact modes. In these tips, there are four cantilever with the different geometries attached to each substrate, resulting in four different spring constants. To avoid problems caused by capillary force or capillary forces, which are generated by a liquid contamination layer, usually present on surfaces in the air, the sample can be studied while immersed in a liquid. The procedure is specially beneficial for biological samples. So then we have non-contact mode. We have two modes that I explained earlier. One is contact mode and the other is non-contact mode. In this mode, the probe operates in the attractive force region and the tip sample interaction is minimized. The use of non-contact mode allowed scanning without influencing the shape of the sample by the tip sample forces. In most cases, the cantilever of choice for this mode is one uh, having high spring constant of about 20 to 100 units so that it does not stick to the sample surface at small amplitudes. The tips mainly used for this mode are silicon probes. Tapping mode, intermittent contact mode. The force measured by AFM can be classified into long range forces and short range forces. The first class dominates when we scan at large distances from the surface and they can be van der Waal force, capillary forces due to water layer often present in an ambient environment. When the scanning is in contact with the surface, the short range forces are very important. In particular, the quantum mechanical forces, Pauli's exclusion principal forces. In tapping mode AFM, the cantilever is oscillating close to its resonance frequency. An electronic feedback loop ensures that the oscillation amplitude remains constant, such that a constant tip sample interaction is maintained during the scanning. Forces that act between the sample and the tip will not only cause a change in the oscillation amplitude, but also a change in the resonant frequency and phase of the cantilever. The amplitude is used for the feedback and the vertical adjustments of the piezo scanner are recorded as a height image. Simultaneously, the phase changes are presented in the phase image topography. The advantages of the tapping mode are the elimination of a large part of permanent shearing forces and the causing of less damage to the sample surface even with stiffer probes. Different components of the sample which exhibits differences in addition and mechanical properties will show a phase contrast and therefore even allow a compositional analysis. For a good phase contrast, larger tip force are of advantage. While minimizing this force reduces the contact or contact area and felicitates high resolution imaging. So in application, it is necessary to choose the right values matching the objectives that we have during these AFM applications. Silicon probes are also used primarily for tapping mode applications. Well, after having studied about these uh, fundamentals, obviously 
one would like to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of AFM modes. In contact mode AFM, the advantages are it can be operated at a high scan speed. Atomic resolution is possible. That means the resolution can go to as low a state as atomic level possibilities there. The other part is that easier scanning of rough samples with extreme changes in vertical topography can be conveniently carried out. Obviously, it will have a lot of limitations also. The disadvantages, therefore, are that there are lateral forces can distort the image. Capillary forces from a fluid layer can cause large forces in terms of normal to the if sample interactions are concerned, then combination of these forces obviously will reduce the spatial resolution and can cause damage to the soft samples. Non-contact mode AFM. Now when we use non-contact AFM mode, it has certain advantages. These are low force is extended on the surface and no damage is caused to soft samples. The disadvantages here are that lower internal resolution is there for this equipment, which is limited by tip sample separation. Slower scan speeds to avoid contact with fluid layer is another way. Usually only applicable in extremely hydrophobic samples with a minimal fluid layer. Tapping mode AFM. As we were talking about the advantages, continuing further, the advantages are high lateral resolution, that is 1 nanometer to 5 nanometer, which is extremely low, lower forces and less damage to soft samples in air, almost no lateral forces. The disadvantages are slower scan rate, speed, then in contact mode. If we compare the slower scan speed in terms of the non-tapping mode and the tapping mode, we find here the speed is lesser. Properties of the different operational modes in AFM are given in the table enclosed below. Now limitations of AFM, continuing with that which I was describing in the last slide, the AFM can be used to study a very wide variety of samples. For example, we can have plastics, metals, glasses, semiconductors, and biological samples such as the walls of the cells and uh, bacteria which are there either on the cells or on the surfaces can be conveniently carried out with this. Unlike STMs or uh, scanning electron microscopy, it does not require a conductive sample. However, there are limitations in achieving atomic resolution. We can have the larger, broader resolution, but there are limitations when we go to atomic uh, resolution for all the above mentioned uh, variety of samples like plastics, metals, glasses, etc., which I had stated. The physical probe used in AFM imaging is not ideally sharp, and that is one of the bigger, major limitations when carrying out the studies on these samples. As a consequence, an AFM image does not reflect the true sample topography, but rather represents the re interaction of the probe with the sample surface. This is called tip convolution. Commercially available probes are becoming more widely available that have very high aspect ratios. These are made with materials such as carbon nanotubes or tungsten spikes. However, these, prob these probes are still very expensive to use for everyday image analysis and they often break during the usage. Therefore, one has to use the tips very carefully. So having talked about the instrumentation part, in this AFM spectroscopy, I am sure you would now like to understand the gist of all this module. So we can summarize what we have learned in this particular module. 
what we have studied is the general instrumentation regarding AFM, the mode of scattering, feedback loop mechanism, then importance of probe which is used in this, advancement in measurement quality, advantages over other electronic microscopes, and shortcomings of AFM uh, were briefly discussed in the course of this presentation. And I hope you would have understood all this. Thank you very much.